thank you all of you i uh, i really appreciate for those people who are following me on youtube on facebook i love your comment please don't hesitate to correct me or to call me on 0701 07 68 78 yes last time i promised you that i'll teach i'll teach you about bios and this bios it is one of the chip on the motherboard we looked a lot of components on the motherboard uh, here in our motherboard we looked all these but now in today's lecture we don't look at the bios it's on here and what is the bio, what is the bios BIOS it is the basic input output system and this BIOS it is a firm wire and what is a firm wire? A firm wire just is a small element that is in the built on a computer's motherboard. Therefore, we can simply define a BIOS as a program a personal, a personal computer's microprocessor uses to get started when a user turns it on. Therefore, this BIOS it is shiny. You can see when it is shiny. It is shiny. Therefore, the BIOS it manages the flow of data between the computer and the devices are attached to it, such as printer, keyboard, mouse, video card or video adapter, etc. Therefore, the BIOS, how is it so important on the motherboard? This is how it is very important. If the CPU is the brain, therefore the BIOS is the heart of the computer. It has a lot of responsibilities. The first responsibility is that hosting the startup program for the hardware how does it hold the startup program the BIOS holds what we call bootstrap when a user come and turn it on turn on the on the on, on the computer that signal the bootstrap will move through the buses I told you we have three types of buses we have the control bus we have the address bus and data bus so which means that signal will move through that onto the hard disk this is one of the hard disk this is called SATA with its SATA cable okay this SATA cable is being attached on the motherboard like this and here on the motherboard like this of course must be powered Yes. Therefore, this signal will go and tell the hard disk, please give me my files which I kept to you. Then this this file will, will come from the hard disk and it will come and occupy one of the address memory on the memory. And this file is called boot.execution file. Then the computer will start. It is normal to hear a single beep. Tip, then the computer starts. Yeah, that's one of the responsibilities. Second responsibility is testing the system in a process called POST. Power on self test. Here, when a computer finds a problem, let's say the RAM, it will give sound and this sound will be in the form of either audio or video for example a ram is faulty or maybe you have spent time without servicing your computer meaning that the computer is having dust and someone came and just squeezed or test twisted your cpu and uh, and the dust fall or fallen into the ram slots they will not start 
then you will hear beeps. When the computer is starting, then it will give you the sound. Meaning that the RAM is faulty. Which sound will it give? Deep, 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 deep. Then now it's you. It's now you. you it's your responsibility now to see what, what could have gone wrong with the computer. If you're not a technician, then you call an electrician like me. I will come, hear the sound, I will simply open your computer and clean the RAM and again blow on the RAM slots and again put it back. That process is called resetting of the RAM. Then the computer, I guess, will start. What if it finds that the CPU is faulty or maybe the dust has fallen on the CPU? Then, of course, I'll do this. this. I'll do the same open the CPU and clean on the CPU socket or maybe where the CPU sits then from there the computer will start and when the CPU is faulty it will give six beeps non-stop deep 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 then it will stop and again it will continue or, or it will repeat then but well, now it's up to you to, to start counting the beeps and you have to be so careful. Then from there, then you have to troubleshoot the problem. Therefore, another responsibility is that produces audio or video errors have told you during post. That is the, the third responsibility. The fourth responsibility is that the BIOS is responsible for locating the volume or the boot sector from the drives to start the operating system. How? Remember, on, on this hard disk or this hard disk here, the IDE hard disk, you are keeping, this hard disk is about like 80 GB. You are keeping a lot of information. Let's say for example, that an, an OS just occupied only 10 GB out of 80 GB so other space are left for saving your documents like a video like maybe your films maybe like your documents all of them then it is the work of the BIOS by sending the bootstrap onto the hard disk here to locate where are the files sitting where are they residing then from there then it will locate that yes my files are residing on 10 gb out of 80 gb and out of, and this has is holding other documents then then it is the work of the bios to locate the sector and remember here we have a lot of gadgets inside here we have the sectors uh, we have the header that reads the information so all those therefore Therefore, that file, as I told you earlier, it will move from the hard disk and occupy one of the address memory, then the computer will start. So it is the work of the BIOS. Another one it is ensuring hardware and software compatibility or system compatibility. How? When you are installing a computer, for example, you have put a new hard disk or maybe a new component and you, you see that it, you get a blue screen sometimes we say that it has dumped the memory meaning that or maybe when you install a new memory and it keeps on the computer keeps on restarting 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 and remember the computer was well working but again you have you wanted to increase a memory from 1 gb to 2 gb but that memory have brought then the computer has started misbehaving meaning that the bios has refused that ram the RAM either it, it is of high speed or of low speed. So therefore it is the work of the BIOS to uh, it's work of the, the of the BIOS to refuse that compatibility. Or maybe you have installed the software it says it's it's incompatible with the hardware. It is the work of the system of the BIOS to tell you that yes, this software you're installing will not uh, totally com compatible. So please go and See, so it's up to you to go and look for another software. 
or maybe that software should be, or, or, or that software may be having a virus. So ch always check properly the information the computer is giving. So it is the work of the BIOS to check for the compatibility of the hardware and software. Another responsibility is that controlling all the aspects of the boot process. We have two types of booting. We have home boot and cold boot. What is the booting? Booting is the starting of the computer when it has been on. I'm not sure it has been off. All together. Then, what about cold boot? Cold boot, it is starting a computer later right on from the socket by switching on the socket and switch on the CPU and the old, you, or on the button and the computer starts. And what is one boot? One boot it is starting of a computer where the computer has been working. And we can perform three, we can perform one boot in three ways. One, you can go on reset button and you restart your computer. Secondly, you can go to start, then shut, then restart the, restart the computer. Thirdly, you can press Ctrl Alt Delete twice. Then the computer does this, you can perform three ways of one boot. So we have two, two types of booting, cold and warm boot. Another one, it is locating and executing any BIOS codes or expansion cards errors when when cards are having when cards are having problems for example you have attached uh, external sound card on one of the on one of the expansion slots i told you have three types of expansion slots we have isa we have pci and we have a gp a gp is accelerated graphic port is it is as it is instruction standard architecture while PC is the peripheral component interconnect but now now computers or now motherboards have what we call PCI Express I told you ah this one is PCI Express this one here the white one here this is a PCI this is the GPA okay yes so when when these slots are having problem with one of the external card uh, attached to it that is the work of the BIOS to 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 give errors or codes or maybe information that please one of the cards are having problem altogether then producing the basic instructions for the computer that's the work of the BIOS Yes. Then, BIOS. How can you how can you access the BIOS utility? Different manufacturers has has different all all manufacturers. They have their ways of accessing them. For example, like Dell, I use F2. Compaq, I use F10, or you can use F10. Then, Mercury that is AMBIOS. You can use their key then others either you can use f1 others you can use escape lenovo now in your days i've told you now at first we had ambios award phonex but nowadays newer boards have come because people are competing for technology we have lenovo we have ether we have uh, we have uh, gateways we have uh, we have compact then for ether use f2 for novel use f1 all together so if you don't know which key can lead you to CMOS or to bios setup then you keep pressing these keys but remember now newer newer computers now other they use a combination of keys by pressing f function fn then with another key, the keys I have mentioned above. Let's say, simple demonstration. Here I have my Lenovo, it is there. You can see, this is the Lenovo computer. Now, if I want to access 
my BIOS setup here. You can see my screen is blank. Then I will start on my computer and I will go to my keyboard and I use F1 when it is starting during the post. Okay, the moment you sit on and you, you press on F1, you can see here I'm now on the BIOS utility. Here I can now do each and everything I want to do. You can see. You can see. Okay. Now here I can change. You can see here I have, I can tell that uh, the information, system date, uh, uh, you can see the boot blocks level. Yes. Then you go to devices. Uh, um, you can see the advanced, you can see the CPU, <coughs> it's here. Yes, I can escape. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This information, I need devices, uh, I need devices, uh, power, security here, I can, I can put my password, plus password here and confirm it okay yes i can go to startup bios here i can press enter i i can see that my dvd drive here because i want to start because i want to install windows okay i will i will change here like this i look on the on the key that changes the what uh this value and i change it you're so going to be the first boot Okay, so I'm setting this computer to begin from the CD. So when I'm having my windows on the CD, then the computer will begin from the CD. And here I will save the changes. And in all computers, saving the changes is F10. I save the changes and I will, it will, say, it will prompt me to save the changes. Then I will say, okay, okay. Then from there, I will wait for the, I will wait for, my computer to begin from the cd then it will bring that press any key to boot from the dvd or cd then i will press it i will start installing my windows next time i'll give you steps on how to install windows please follow me on youtube follow me on facebook greetings to my wife my lovely wife my pretty wife Nayabale julian i love you I love you. Thank you for encouraging me. Thank you for keeping me alive. Thank you and goodbye all of you.